Argentavis was one of the largest flying birds ever discovered. Estimates suggest that it had a wingspan of around 7 to 8 meters this is comparable to the wingspan of a small airplane. It was a member of the group known as Teratorns. These birds were adapted for soaring and gliding over long distances, likely covering vast areas in search of food. It was likely a scavenger, feeding on the carcasses of large mammals. Its large size and keen eyesight would have allowed it to spot carrion from high altitudes and cover large territories to find food. The exact reasons for its extinction are unclear, but it is thought to be related to environmental changes and competition with other species. The Teratornus was similar to condors, although an analysis of the functional morphology of its skull, namely its larger bill and ability to spread its mandibles and swallow its prey whole, suggests that it was an active and carnivorous predator rather than a scavenger. Its legs had greater anteroposterior ability than those of condors, the birds were agile and well-suited for walking and stalking prey on the ground similarly to turkeys. On the other hand, their flight was similar to that of condors. Teratornus had legs that were too short for it to take flight by running on flat ground. It is theorized that the Teratornus primarily inhabited cliff terrain, where it could take off and soar through the air easily. The turkey vulture is the most widespread of the New World vultures. It is not closely related to the Old World vultures. The two groups of vultures strongly resemble each other because of convergent evolution, natural selection often leads to similar body plans in animals that adapt independently to similar conditions. The turkey vulture is a scavenger and feeds almost exclusively on carrion. It finds its food using its keen eyes and sense of smell, flying low enough to detect the gases produced by the beginnings of the process of decay in dead animals. In flight, it uses thermals to move through the air, flapping its wings infrequently. King vultures are easily recognizable due to their striking and colorful appearance. They have a predominantly white plumage with black wingtips and tail feathers. One of their most distinctive features is their multicolored head, which can include shades of orange, red and yellow. While not as massive as some other vulture species, they are still large birds. They inhabit tropical lowland forests, they are scavengers, their powerful beaks are adapted for tearing through tough animal hides, allowing them to access the soft tissues inside. King vultures are social birds and are often seen in groups, especially around a carcass. Despite their relatively large size, they are known to be somewhat submissive to other vulture species at carcasses. These vultures typically nest in trees, laying a single egg. The nesting period and incubation last for about two months. Both parents are involved in incubation and caring for the chick. The California condor became extinct in the wild in 1987 when all remaining wild individuals were captured, but has since been reintroduced in western United States. The species is listed by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature as critically endangered. It dramatically declined in the 20th century due to agricultural chemicals, poaching, lead poisoning and habitat destruction. The plumage is black with patches of white on the underside of the wings, the head is largely bald, with skin color ranging from gray on young birds to yellow and bright orange on breeding adults. Its 3 meters wingspan is the widest of any North American bird, and its weight of up to 12 kilograms nearly equals that of the trumpeter swan, the heaviest among native North American bird species. The condor is a scavenger and eats large amounts of carrion. The Andean condor is found in the Andes Mountains and adjacent Pacific coasts of western South America. With a maximum wingspan of 3.3 meters and weight of 15 kilograms, the Andean condor is one of the largest flying birds in the world. It is primarily a scavenger, feeding on carrion. It prefers large carcasses, such as those of deer or cattle. It reaches sexual maturity at 5 or 6 years of age and nests at elevations of up to 5,000 meters, 
generally on inaccessible rock ledges. One or two eggs are usually laid. It is one of the world's longest living birds, with a lifespan of over 70 years in some cases. It is threatened by habitat loss and by secondary poisoning from lead in carcasses killed by hunters. Captive breeding programs have been instituted in several countries. The Egyptian vulture, also called the pharaoh's chicken, it is widely distributed southern Europe, northern Africa and India. The contrasting underwing pattern and wedge-shaped tail make it distinctive in flight as it soars in thermals during the warmer parts of the day. They feed mainly on carrion but are opportunistic and will prey on small vertebrates. They also feed on the eggs of other birds, breaking larger ones by tossing a large pebble onto them. The nominate population, especially in Africa, is known for its use of stones as tools. When a large egg, such as that of an ostrich or bustard, is located, the bird walks up to it with a large pebble held in its bill and tosses the pebble by swinging the neck down over the egg. The operation is repeated until the egg cracks from the blows. Tests with both hand-reared and wild birds suggest that the behavior is innate, not learnt by observing other birds, and elicited once they associate eggs with food and have access to pebbles. Tree snails are a vital component of the hook-billed kite's diet. The density of their population within a region is proportional to the presence of tree snails. It has also been observed that the beak of the hook-billed kite has adapted in size and shape between different regions of their territory in response to the species of tree snail available to them. However, terrestrial snails, small vertebrates, crustaceans and insects are also taken. When it finds a tree snail it holds it with its talon and uses its beak to pry open the shell. Crested Serpent Eagle is named for the distinctive crest of feathers on its head. It has a brown plumage with a short, rounded tail and a wingspan ranging from approximately 1 meter as the name suggests, it primarily feeds on snakes, but its diet is not limited to them. Like many raptors, it hunts by soaring at great heights and then descending rapidly to catch its prey. They are known for their soaring flight, often observed circling high in the sky while searching for prey. They are also known to perch on exposed branches or treetops, providing them with a vantage point for hunting. Even if they are classified as least concern, localized threats, such as habitat destruction and human encroachment, can impact certain populations. Strictly a carrion feeder, the Rupel's vulture has been known to follow game herds on their seasonal migrations and feeds in large numbers at carcasses, usually with other old-world vulture species. Though it might take advantage of the remains of an animal killed by a lion, or other large predator, it can also feed on animals that have died from injuries, disease or old age. Though they prefer freshly killed meat, they can eat older carcasses without a problem. Their populations are experiencing declining populations throughout their entire range. These declines can be attributed to loss of habitat related to human-related land use, poisoning, human use for medicine or meat, loss of nesting sites and declining availability of food sources. Poisoning is currently thought to be the most serious threat to all vulture populations in Africa, although they are not usually the intended target. In events where predators such as lions or hyenas have killed livestock, carbofurin poisons have been placed into carcasses as retaliation against the predators. Red-headed vulture is a medium-sized vulture of 80 centimeters in length, weighing 5 kilograms and having a wingspan of about 2 meters it has a prominent naked head, deep red to orange in the adult, paler red in the juvenile. The species has become increasingly difficult to find due to hunting. In places like Cambodia, special programs have been implemented to support critically endangered vulture species. Evidence has shown that hunters have started using poisons in their hunting practices. In the shared ecosystem, 
dominant vulture species like gyps vultures have a competitive advantage in scavenging on carcasses. They typically outcompete the red-headed vulture for access to food resources, which can lead to food scarcity for the species. As a result, the red-headed vulture may have limited access to suitable feeding opportunities, potentially affecting its survival and contributing to its population decline. Before the arrival of humans in New Zealand, the only predator of the native giant flightless birds was Host's eagle, an enormous species of raptor. It was the largest eagle known to have ever lived, and one of the largest of all birds of prey. Yet its wings were actually proportionally short for its size, spanning about 2.5 meters, giving it less ability to soar but much better maneuverability when flying in the thick vegetation of scrubland and forests. At its size and weight when striking it would have hit its prey with a force equivalent to a falling cinder block, and with no major competitors it could have fed from a single large kill for many days. As apex predators host's eagles would also have never been particularly numerous, and their population was very sensitive to the availability of their prey species. The harpy eagle is a large eagle, with females being larger than males. Adult females typically weigh 9 kilograms, and males weigh 6 kilograms they are easily recognized by their distinctive appearance. They have black plumage on their upper parts and head, a white underside, and a double crest of feathers on their head. Their legs are powerful, and they have large, curved talons. They are apex predators, and their adaptations make them highly effective hunters. Their large size and powerful talons allow them to capture and carry relatively large prey, including monkeys and sloths. They are known to be agile flyers, capable of maneuvering through dense forest canopies. Harpy eagles build large nests in the tallest trees of the forest canopy. The nests are made from sticks and can be several feet in diameter. These eagles have a relatively low reproductive rate, with females laying one to two eggs every two to three years. Due to their ecological similarities, the crowned eagle is considered to be the African counterpart of the harpy eagle. Thanks to its bold and highly conspicuous behavior, it is exceptionally well studied for a large, forest-dwelling eagle. Due to a relatively high level of habitat adaptability, it was until recently considered to be faring well by the standards of large, forest-dependent raptors. However, today it is generally thought that it is decreasing far more than was previously perceived due to the almost epidemic destruction of native tropical African forest. Battler is in life history, a rather peculiar bird of prey with a freewheeling generalist diet that includes much carrion but also tends to hunt a wide range of live prey. They are highly aerial birds that spend much time soaring and will frequently fly with exaggerated embellishments, perhaps when excited or angered. They tend to build a relatively small if sturdy stick nest in a large tree and lay only a single egg. Despite being a rather aggressive bird in other contexts, battlers are easily flushed from their own nest, making them exceptionally vulnerable to nest predators, including humans and nest failures. This species has long been known to be declining due primarily to anthropogenic causes such as habitat destruction, pesticide usage and persecution. The golden eagle is the most widely distributed species of eagle. They are one of the best known birds of prey in the northern hemisphere. They use their agility and speed combined with powerful feet and large, sharp talons to hunt a variety of prey, mainly rabbits and rodents. They maintain home ranges or territories that may be as large as 200 kilometers square. They build large nests in cliffs and other high places to which they may return for several breeding years. Most breeding activities take place in the spring, they are monogamous and may remain together for several years or possibly for life. For centuries, this species has been one of the most highly regarded birds used in falconry. Because of its hunting prowess, the golden eagle is regarded with great mystic reverence in some ancient, tribal cultures. It is one of the most extensively studied species of raptor in the world in some parts of its range.
Garganoetis lived during the late Miocene, it was similar in size to modern golden eagles. The Gargano Peninsula, where fossils of this eagle were found, was once an isolated island. The presence this species suggests adaptation to insular environments. This island had a diverse range of flora and fauna with various mammals, reptiles and birds, making it an interesting site for paleontological study. Like many large eagles, Garganoetis is believed to have been a top predator in its ecosystem. Its large size and powerful talons would have allowed it to prey on a variety of animals, possibly including small mammals and birds. Changes in climate, sea level, and the availability of prey resources are among the factors that could have contributed to the extinction of species on this isolated island. The northern goshawk is a medium to large-sized hawk. Formidable hunters, they are adapted for hunting in wooded areas. They are known for their agility in navigating through dense forests to capture prey. They are territorial birds, and they can be aggressive in defending their nesting territories. They are known for their courtship displays, which include aerial acrobatics. Northern goshawks have sharp talons and a powerful beak, which are essential for capturing and eating their prey. When hunting, they often employ a wait and ambush strategy. They perch in a concealed location and then make a rapid, surprise attack on their prey. They produce a variety of calls, including high-pitched whistles and harsh screams. These vocalizations are used for communication between mating pairs and during territorial disputes. The abundance of northern goshawks can be influenced by cyclic population dynamics in their primary prey species, such as cyclic fluctuations in the populations of snowshoe hares. Due to its ecological importance and sensitivity to environmental changes, the northern goshawk is often studied as an indicator species for forest health. Monitoring their populations can provide insights into the overall well-being of forest ecosystems. The little sparrowhawk is, as its name suggests a very small bird of prey which is also distinguished by two white spots on the underside of its central tail feathers and by a narrow white patch on the lower rump. It is a woodland bird which can be found in patches of woodland and scrub, typically along river valleys. In drier areas it can be found in open areas such as fainboss and grassland, also in suburban gardens. It is a bird hunter, waiting in cover the pursuing prey in a short dash and capturing it in flight. The main prey is small birds up to the size of a thrush or a dove. Bats may also be caught and some prey is taken from the ground. Daggett's eagle is a bird of prey from the late Pleistocene of southwest North America. Its feet had less grasping ability than other eagles but it also had particularly strong leg muscles, suggesting it was much better adapted for walking around on the ground. With its large size, long legs, and terrestrial habits it seems to have convergently evolved to fill the same ecological niche as the modern secretary bird, a grassland-dwelling walking predator that hunted on foot, kicking and stomping small prey animals. The bald eagle is a bird of prey found in North America. A sea eagle, it is found near large bodies of open water with an abundant food supply and old-growth trees for nesting. It is an opportunistic feeder which subsists mainly on fish, which it swoops down upon and snatches from the water with its talons. It builds the largest nest of any North American bird and the largest tree nests ever recorded for any animal species. Bald eagles are not bald, the name derives from an older meaning of the word, white-headed. It is the national bird of the United States of America and appears on its seal. In the late 20th century it was on the brink of extirpation in the contiguous United States. Populations have since recovered, and the species status was upgraded from endangered to threatened in 1995, and removed from the list altogether in 2007. The average lifespan of bald eagles in the wild is around 20 years, with the oldest confirmed one having been 38 years of age. When competing for food, eagles will usually dominate other fish eaters and scavengers, aggressively displacing mammals and other birds. They are less active, 
bold predators than golden eagles and get relatively more of their food as carrion and from kleptoparasitism. Stellar sea eagle is a very large diurnal bird of prey in the family Accipitridae. Typically, it is the heaviest eagle in the world, at about 5 to 10 kilograms as in all fish and sea eagles, as well as the majority of the world's fish-eating raptors, Stellar sea eagle has spicules, which are bumpy waves all along the bottom of their feet, which allow them to hold fish that may otherwise slip out of their grasp. The feet are very powerful despite not bearing talons. They suffer from many threats like habitat alteration, industrial pollution, and overfishing. The current population is estimated at 5,000 and decreasing. As its other common names suggest, the osprey's diet consists almost exclusively of fish. It possesses specialized physical characteristics and unique behavior in hunting its prey. Its unique characteristics classify it in its own taxonomic genus. They have a vision that is well adapted to detecting underwater objects from the air. Prey is first sighted when the osprey is 10 to 40 meters above the water, after which the bird hovers momentarily and then plunge feet first into the water. They catch fish by diving into a body of water, oftentimes completely submerging their entire bodies. As an osprey dives it adjusts the angle of its flight to account for the distortion of the fish's image caused by refraction. Ospreys will typically eat on a nearby perch but have also been known to carry fish for longer distances. They have several adaptations that suit their passivorous lifestyle, reversible outer toes, sharp spicules on the underside of the toes, closable nostrils to keep out water during dives, backward-facing scales on the talons which act as barbs to help hold its catch and dense plumage which is oily and prevents its feathers from getting waterlogged. The secretary bird is a large, mostly terrestrial bird of prey. Endemic to Africa, it is usually found in the open grasslands and savanna of the sub-Saharan region. It is instantly recognizable as a very large bird with an eagle-like body on crane-like legs that give the bird a height of as much as 1.3 meters the sexes are similar in appearance. Adults have a featherless red-orange face and predominantly gray plumage, with a flattened dark crest and black flight feathers and thighs. Breeding can take place at any time of year, but tends to be late in the dry season. The nest is built at the top of a thorny tree, and a clutch of one to three eggs is laid. In years with plentiful food all three young can survive to fledging. The secretary bird hunts and catches prey on the ground, often stomping on victims to kill them. Insects and small vertebrates make up its diet. Although it occurs over a large range, the results of localized surveys suggest that the total population is experiencing a rapid decline, probably as a result of habitat destruction. The species is therefore classed as endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Tito Pollens was an enormous barn owl, around one meter tall, the size of a large eagle and one of the biggest owls to ever exist. It lived in old-growth pine forests on what is now the Andres Island archipelago. It probably evolved in Cuba, and colonized the Bahamas shortly after the Hushas did, sometime in the last 400,000 years during a glacial period when a particularly low seal level meant the islands were only about 30 kilometers apart. Although many popular online sources refer to Tito pollens as being flightless, it actually had large robust wings and could probably fly quite well. The barn owl is the most widely distributed species of owl in the world and one of the most widespread of all species of birds, being found almost everywhere except for polar and desert regions. There is considerable variation of size and color among the approximately 28 subspecies, but most are between 33 and 39 centimeters in length. The plumage on the head and back is a mottled shade of gray or brown that on the underparts varies from white to brown and is sometimes speckled with dark markings. 
The face is characteristically heart-shaped and is white in most subspecies. It is nocturnal over most of its range, but in Great Britain and some Pacific Islands, it also hunts by day. They specialize in hunting animals on the ground, and nearly all of their food consists of small mammals, which they locate by sound, their hearing being very acute. The facial disc helps with the bird's hearing, as is shown by the fact that, with the rough feathers removed, the bird can still determine a sound source's direction, although without the disc it cannot determine the source's height. Like most owls, the barn owl flies silently, tiny serrations on the leading edges of its flight feathers and a hair-like fringe on the trailing edges help to break up the flow of air over the wings, thereby reducing turbulence and the noise that accompanies it. Cretan Owl was yet Weird Island Owl, it was descended from the Eurasian Little Owl, but become much larger. It stood around 60 centimeters tall, over three times bigger than its living relative. Its legs weren't quite as long as those of the modern burrowing owl, but they were still proportionally much longer than those of little owls and show adaptations for terrestrial movement. The burrowing owl is a small, long-legged owl found throughout open landscapes of North and South America. They nest and roost in burrows, such as those excavated by prairie dogs. Unlike most owls, burrowing owls are often active during the day, although they tend to avoid the midday heat. Like many other kinds of owls, though, they do most of their hunting during dusk and dawn, when they can use their night vision and hearing to their advantage. Living in open grasslands as opposed to forests, the burrowing owl has developed longer legs that enable it to sprint, as well as fly, when hunting. They often nest and roost in the burrows made by ground squirrels, a strategy also used by rattlesnakes. When threatened, the owl retreats to the burrow and produces rattling and hissing sounds similar to those of a rattlesnake. The behavior is suggested to be an example of acoustic Batesian mimicry and has been observed to be an effective strategy against animals that are familiar with the dangers posed by rattlesnakes. Ornomegalonyx had very long legs for its size, but was bulky overall and probably short-tailed. Its body mass in life is initially estimated to have been approximately 30 kilograms. The modern owl that most resembles the Cuban giant owl in proportions is probably the dainty and quite small burrowing owl, the only surviving owl closely tied to the ground. This implies similar adaptations to the terrestrial lifestyle, but not a close phylogenetic relationship. The legs and feet of the Cuban giant owl appear to be very large and powerfully built. This supports the theory that they were strong runners, hence the alternate name, cursorial. The São Miguel Scops owl was found only in the Azores on São Miguel Island. About 18 centimeters tall, its wing proportions indicate it would have been a poor flyer, instead primarily hunting on foot in the dense Lori Silva forests. Since there were no terrestrial mammals or reptiles on São Miguel at the time, its diet probably mainly consisted of insects and other invertebrates, and it would have in turn been the potential prey of larger predatory birds. Eurasian scops owls have distinct facial features, including prominent tufts of feathers on their ears, which are actually feather tufts and not true horns. Their facial disc, the collection of feathers around the face, helps funnel sound to their ears, aiding in their exceptional hearing. Like many owl species, it is primarily nocturnal. Some populations of Eurasian scops owls are migratory, moving to warmer regions during the winter months. Migration is often influenced by the availability of food. The Eurasian scops owl is generally not considered globally threatened, and its populations are stable. However, habitat loss and degradation can impact local populations, and conservation efforts are important for their continued well-being. The great horned owl is generally colored for camouflage. In most aspects of their behavior, they are typical of owls and most birds of prey. From experimentally raising young owls in captivity, Paul Arrington felt that they were a bird of essentially low intelligence that could only hunt when partially wild and instinctually driven by hunger to hunt whatever they first encounter. 
he showed captive birds that were provided strips of meat from hatching, rather than having to hunt or to simulate hunting to obtain food, had no capacity to hunt. On the contrary, William Bayard compared behaviorally his captive raised great horned owls to parrots, which are famously intelligent birds, although not as often playful it knows its keeper and usually accepts whatever he wishes to do with a good deal of tolerance. Almost all prey is killed by crushing with the owl's feet or by incidentally stabbing of the talons, though some may be bitten about the face as well. Prey is swallowed whole when possible. When prey is swallowed whole, owls regurgitate pellets of bone and other non-digestible bits about six to ten hours later, usually in the same location where the prey was consumed. Eurasian eagle owl is one of the largest species of living owl, and females can grow to a total length of 75 centimeters, with males being slightly smaller. This bird has distinctive ear tufts, with upper parts that are mottled with darker blackish coloring and tawny. They are found in many habitats, but are mostly birds of mountainous regions or other rocky areas. It is mostly a nocturnal predator, hunting for a range of different prey species. Predominantly, their diet is composed of small mammals. It may well be the most powerful extant species of owl, able to attack and kill large prey far beyond the capacities of most other living owls. However, the species is even more marked for its ability to live on more diverse prey than possibly any other comparably sized raptorial bird, which, given its considerable size, is almost fully restricted to eagles. This species can adapt to surprisingly small prey where it is the only kind available and to large prey where it is abundant. Eurasian eagle owls feed most commonly on small mammals weighing 100 grams or more, although nearly 45% of the prey species recorded have an average adult body mass of less than 100 grams usually 55-80% to of the food of eagle owls is mammalian. The snowy owl has a number of unique adaptations to its habitat and lifestyle, which are quite distinct from other extant owls. One of the largest species of owl, it is the only owl with mainly white plumage. Males tend to be a purer white overall while females tend to more have more extensive flecks of dark brown. Most owls sleep during the day and hunt at night, but the snowy owl is often active during the day, especially in the summertime. It is both a specialized and generalist hunter. Its breeding efforts and global population are closely tied to the availability of tundra-dwelling lemmings, but in the non-breeding season, and occasionally during breeding, the snowy owl can adapt to almost any available prey, most often other small mammals and northerly water birds, as well as, opportunistically, carrion. It is a nomadic bird, rarely breeding at the same locations or with the same mates on an annual basis and often not breeding at all if prey is unavailable. Whereas the global population was once estimated at over 200,000 individuals, recent data suggests that there are probably fewer than 100,000 globally and that the number of successful breeding pairs is 28,000 or even considerably less. While the causes are not well understood, numerous, Complex environmental factors often correlated with global warming are probably at the forefront of the fragility of the snowy owl's existence. The Ural owl is often considered nocturnal with peaks of activity at dusk and just before dawn. However, taken as a whole and since it mainly lives the taiga zone where very long summer days are the norm against extensive dark during the winter, Ural owls are not infrequently fully active during daylight hours during the warmer months, while brooding young. Presumably during winter, they are mostly active during the night. Thus, the species may be more correctly classified as cathemeral as is much of their main prey. Normally, Ural owls are not too shy and may be approached quite closely.